So here we go again. Another retrospective on one of gaming's most innovative systems, the PS3. I get that I've made many videos on this console in the past, for every year, but I believe it's important to keep you all up to date on the ever-changing landscape of the system, including new community updates, homebrewing, online support, and history that was never covered. So yeah, this is the PS3. And to be honest, it was the most significant advance this console generation ever saw since the PS2. Honestly, the jump from PS2 to PS3 visuals was massive, and HD practically became the norm because of this device. The PlayStation 3 introduced numerous new features and groundbreaking hardware that we now all take for granted. Blu-ray movie standards? Well, the PS3 propelled that format to victory over the HD DVD, and effectively launched high definition entertainment at home. What about streaming services? High definition gaming? Online for free? Well, the PS3 pioneered a lot of those capabilities, and did so via the new HDMI connectivity standard, which Xbox would not adopt into their consoles until two years after the PS3's release. The PlayStation 3, although having a terrible launch, later gained traction and gave way to some of the best PlayStation exclusives ever released. The Last of Us, Gran Turismo, and the Uncharted series practically became the PS3's backbone, and was one of the sole reasons to own a PS3 back in the 2000s, and even today, along with some PS2 backwards compatibility. The PS3 was a revolutionary console, and ushered us games into the HD boom that was in full swing in 2006. But, as always on this channel, I'd like to explain why this console was so revolutionary. First, let's discuss this console's starting place and what made it so great in the first place. The PlayStation 3 was developed by Sony and it was released in November 11, 2006 in Japan and later released worldwide in March 2007. The development of the PS3 began in 2001, shortly after the release of the PlayStation 2. Sony's goal for the PS3 was to create a powerful console that would push the boundaries of gaming and entertainment. The PS3 was designed to compete with Microsoft's Xbox 360 and Nintendo's Wii consoles. Sony's strategy for the PS3 was to differentiate it from the Xbox 360 by emphasizing its multimedia capabilities, including support for high-definition video playback, Blu-ray disc technology, and advanced online features. The PS3 was initially released in two versions, a 20GB model and a 60GB model. The 60GB model featured built-in Wi-Fi, a memory stick slash SD card reader, and full backwards compatibility with PS2 games. The 20GB model lacked these features, but was sold at a lower price point. The PS3 faced some challenges during its early years. The high price point, particularly from the 60GB model, was a barrier for many consumers. In addition, the PS3 faced competition from the Xbox 360, which had the larger library of games and the stronger online community. Community. Sony had always had affordable systems from the PS2 launch, previously which was $299. So you can understand why consumers were so unhappy. Part of the reason why it was such an expensive console was the PlayStation 3's Blu-ray drive, which was a new format back in 2006 that was meant to replace the standard of DVDs as it had a lot more resolution and storage capacity. Sony was really trying to push new formats with every console that they made. In 1995, they pushed CDs with the PlayStation 1, and then they did DVDs with the PlayStation 2, and now it's Blu-rays with the PS3. That's not the only innovative thing that they've pushed with this console. The cell processor was another part of the PS3 that really drove it to be the most powerful console of the 7th generation. One small catch though, nobody knew how to take advantage of it. The cell reported to be incredibly difficult to develop for in its first years on the market. It was such a unique architecture that nobody had worked with before, and it frustrated the hell out of game developers, said it was practically a waste of everyone's time. The PlayStation 3 makes my life as a software developer much harder. This was definitely the type of criticism Sony thought they wouldn't get. At the time, they thought that developers could be pushed to think outside the box of standard game development. It's only till the 2010s when developers started to fully take advantage of the PS3, where some games look the same if not better than their Xbox counterparts. Naughty Dog developers even stated that as of the release of Uncharted 3, they were practically squeezing out every last drop of the PS3. Despite these challenges, the PS3 was successful in its own right. The console received critical acclaim for its advanced graphics capabilities, multimedia features, and online capabilities. Abilities. It also features several popular exclusive games, including Uncharted, God of War, and the Gran Turismo franchise. Over time, Sony released several iterations of the PS3, including the slim versions, and a super slim version that was released in 2012. Compared to the Xbox 360, the PS3 pioneered a lot of features that practically all home consoles use now, such as built-in Wi-Fi and hard drives to store saves instead of on memory cards. The launch of the PlayStation 3 was highly anticipated by gamers and industry experts alike. There were many controversies surrounding the PS3 when it first came out. 
There were many controversies that surrounded the PS3 when it came out. Some of that included the limited supply of consoles available, with many consumers who pre-ordered the console were unable to receive it on launch day, and some stores reportedly had lines of customers waiting outside for days in advance of the launch. There were even reports of violence that surrounded the release of the PS3, where a customer was shot, and even campers who stayed outside of game shops were robbed at gunpoint. Customers were even shot in a drive-by shooting with BB guns, and 60 campers fought over 10 systems. Despite these controversies, the PS3 launch was still highly successful. In Japan, the console sold out within minutes of its release, and in the US, over 150,000 units were sold on the first day. The PS3 launch was also marked by a number of exclusive games, including Resistance Fall of Man and Motorstorm, which helped build up excitement among gamers. The console also featured advanced online capabilities, which allowed players to connect with each other and access streaming services like Netflix and Hulu. Overall, the launch of the PS3 was a significant event in the history of gaming. While it faced some controversies and challenges, it was still a highly successful console that helped push the boundaries of gaming and entertainment. The PlayStation 3 uses a Cell microprocessor, which was designed by Sony, Toshiba, and IBM. Graphics processing is handled by the NVIDIA RSX Reality Synthesizer, which can produce resolutions from 480i all the way up to 1080p. The PS3 has 256 megabytes of RAM and 256 megabytes of video memory. The PlayStation 3 came with the DualShock 3 controller, which was a vast upgrade from the PS2 controller, as it had full wireless support and rechargeable battery. The launch PS3s however came with the 6-axis controllers, which are like the DualShock 3s but lacked rumble and were cheaply made. Overall, it feels nice to hold for long gaming sessions, but I found that it didn't fit the shape of my hand very well, and it feels slightly boxed compared to the Xbox 360 controller, which was comfortable and fit my hands very well. Still, it was an upgrade from the DualShock 2. The design of the PlayStation 3 was a departure from the previous two PlayStation consoles, which had a more angular and minimalist design. The PS3 features a much more curvaceous and futuristic look, with a glossy black exterior and a silver PlayStation logo. Overall, the design of the PlayStation 3 was notable for its futuristic and sleek appearance. While some critics found the design to be too glossy and prone to fingerprint smudges, many gamers appreciate the console's unique look and feel. The original PlayStation 3 models were available in two configurations, 20GB and 60GB. Both models had the slot-loading Blu-ray drives on the front, which was a key feature to set the PS3 out from its competitors. The front of the console also featured two touch-sensitive buttons for power and eject, as well as a row of LED lights which indicated the console's status. The 60GB model of the PlayStation 3 had additional features, including built-in Wi-Fi and a multi-card reader for memory stick, SD, and compact flash memory cards. They also had four USB 2.0 ports and a HDMI port. I have the original 60GB launch model, and out of all the PS3 versions that came out, this one was the best, and practically the only one you should consider buying. Now, there were several versions of the PS3 that came out. You had the OG 20GB, the 60GB model, Models, but you also had the 80 gigabyte model, which came out eight months later. Keep in mind that all these versions of the PlayStation 3 had full backwards compatibility with PS2 games. After 2007, all PS3 models lost their backwards compatibility with PS2 games. A way you can tell if you have the backwards compatibility PS3 versus the non-backwards compatibility PS3 with the shiny front on the console and the four extra USB ports and memory card slots. If you don't have any of those, then you just got a regular fat PS3. It's super confusing, I know, but if you're a collector, these tips can help you determine the value of a PS3 on eBay and Facebook Marketplace, as prices for these things have skyrocketed. And I don't think it's because of me. Keep in mind that all PS3s can play PS1 games through full software emulation. In the later years, Sony released several iterations of the PS3 with different designs. The PlayStation 3 Slim, which was released in 2009, had a much more compact and streamlined design than its original models, with a matte black finish and fewer ports. Some key notes of the Slim was that it was released at a price of $299, making it the cheapest the PS3 has ever been. The Slim was drastically changed with its full matte finish, as well as the removal of backwards compatibility with PS2 games. The PS3 Super Slim, released in 2012, was even smaller and lighter, with a sliding disc cover and a textured black finish. It's funny, because no one really asked for this, because the Slim was already such a big upgrade from the PlayStation 3 fat, but in Sony's eternal wisdom, they gave it to us. One of the main reasons to own a PS3 today is due to its interface, which is known as the XMB. And in my opinion, it is practically the best UI we ever saw from a console. It is incredibly easy to navigate and upholds a modern look. All you could possibly want is right at your fingertips. Video streaming, music playback, and PlayStation Network are so easy to navigate to, and it's all presented in a full native 1080p resolution, something that the 360 lacks. So the PS3 feels like a lot more up-to-date system and something that looks really crisp on 4K televisions. One of the key features of the XMB was its integration with PlayStation Network, which allowed users to access online multiplayer gaming, downloadable games and content, as well as social features like messaging and friends lists. The great thing about the PS3 is that you had free online. During the time where you had to pay for Xbox Live, it made the PS3 look like a much more appealing choice. 
And the great thing about free online is that PS3 servers are still up and running in 2023. And the same applies to PSN stores, where you can still buy games, applications, and more on the 14-year-old system. The sad thing is though, a lot of these online services are shutting down either this year or have already shut down as of 2022. Now let's talk about the main reason why you would want to get a PS3 right now the games. PS3 had released some of the greatest console exclusives seen in the recent decade. Some notable great games of the PS3 was Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of Patriots, a stealth action game that follows the story of Solid Snake as he fights against the private military company that has taken over the world. Another great game would be Red Dead Redemption and its follow-up DLC Undead Nightmare. The game is set in the year 1911 and follows the story of John Marston, a former outlaw who is forced to work with the federal government to bring his former gang members to justice. The gameplay of Red Dead Redemption includes both third-person shoot includes both third-person shooter and an open-world exploration element, and the player can engage in a variety of activities such as hunting, gambling, and horseback riding. The game also features a morality system, where the player's actions can affect the game's story and the ending. Red Dead Redemption received critical acclaim upon its release. It has since become regarded as one of the greatest video games of all time, and spawned a prequel, which was known as Red Dead Redemption 2. Lastly, another great game to consider would be Bioshock, a first-person shooter that takes place in the underworld city of Rapture, and explores themes of objectivism, morality, and the consequences of unchecked scientific progress. Seriously, I did not expect this video to become so analytical. Some notable pickups I would recommend would definitely be the Hawk series, a massive open-world fighter pilot game with hundreds of planes and scenarios for you to get lost in, a very fun arcade fighter game, and a very worthwhile addition. The Fallout series like Fallout 3 and New Vegas are very good pickups, especially if you're interested in role-playing and open-world subgenres. Burnout Paradise is also a great addition, as it's another open-world arcade racer with tons of cars and great scenery. Another great open-world game would be GTA 4, probably my favorite out of the GTA franchise. Oh, and let's not forget the Call of Duty games. The multiplayer is still just as good as it was back in 2009. Backups compatibility is another reason to buy a PS3, because as I said before, it can play all PS2 games and PS1 games, kind of making it the ultimate PlayStation to own. When I was uh, writing the script for this video, a comment showed up on one of my PS on the previous PS3 video that I did, and the person said, the fact that you only need a backwards compatible PS3 and PS5 to play an entire generation of PlayStation games is insane. And to be honest, it really is. All you need is a PS3 and a PS5, and you can play the entire generation and library of PlayStation games. So yeah, you can play all PS2 games and PS1 games right at your fingertips, making practically owning a PS2 kind of pointless. And you don't even need the original launch models with the PS2 backwards compatibility. All you need is any PS3 and homebrewing software and you can emulate your PS2 games in just a couple of hours. This is kind of why I think the original launch models are the best model to own. You get full backwards compatibility with PS1 and PS2 games. So I can play my whole Silent Hill collection in newer hardware without the use of component cables, memory cards, and wired controllers. And it looks pretty good as well. Sure it isn't in native 1080p resolution, but the PS3 offers smoothing features that can help smooth out aliasing in some edges. This for me was the original way I played through the Silent Hill games, and it led to some of my most favorite memories on the console. PS1 emulation is pretty good on the console as well, with the majority of games looking much better on the newer system with HDMI than its composite cables on the PlayStation 1. Homebrewing your PS3 offers so many features such as tuning your fan control to help cool down the system better, as well as being able to see CPU and GPU temps to see if your PS3 is running a little too hot. Homebrewing ensures full control over your system and is practically a must have if you want your launch PS3 to last. And well, the yellow light of death is still an issue. That will happen to your PS3 if you don't take proper care of it. This only affects the fat PS3s, especially the launch models, as they're shipped with specific capacitors on the mainboard that do not last very long and cause all sorts of issues. And that's kind of the catch of owning a PS3 launch model. Sure, they have all these features that make the PS3 worth owning, but they do require some sort of maintenance to make sure that they last longer. Specifically, like replacing capacitors, fans, reballing the CPU, and probably just dusting out the system. But honestly, it's really worth it if you got a PS5 and a PS3, because that means you can play the entire library of PlayStation games just with those two consoles. While it is technically possible to run emulators on the PS3 console, it is still not a straightforward process and requires a degree of technical knowledge and skill. One of the many challenges for emulating on the PS3 is that the console has limited hardware resources compared to modern computers, which can make it difficult to run certain emulators and games smoothly. In addition, running unauthorized software on PS3 can potentially void your warranty and may even be illegal in some areas. That being said, there are communities of users that have developed homebrew softwares and emulators for PS3 that allow users to play games from older consoles such as the NES, SNES, and Sega Genesis. However, using these emulators may not be as polished or reliable as those available on modern computers, and users may encounter issues with compatibility, stability, and performance. 
As stated before, the PS3 is an ultimate emulation machine, with it being able to play three generations of games. There is crazy value in buying a PS3 right now, especially with the PS4 and PS5 not being able to play PS3 games. In my closing thoughts, there are several reasons why you might consider getting a PS3 in 2023. Number one, you get an access to a larger library of games. PS3 has a vast library of games that are released during its lifespan, including many critically acclaimed titles that are still enjoyable on the PlayStation today. Some of these games may not be available on newer consoles, making the PS3 an attractive option for gamers who want to explore a wider range of titles. Number two is affordability. As the PS3 is now an older console, it's likely to be available at a much lower price than newer consoles. This can make it an attractive option for budget conscious gamers who want to enjoy a high quality gaming experience without breaking the bank. And number three is nostalgia. For some gamers, the PS3 may hold a special place in their hearts as a console that they enjoyed playing during their childhood or teenage years. Playing a PS3 in 2023 can be a way to relive those memories and experience the joy of playing their favorite games once again. And lastly, number four is accessibility. Unlike some newer consoles, the PS3 does not require an internet connection to play most games. This can be an advantage for gamers who do not have a stable internet connection or prefer to play games offline. Ultimately, whether or not you should get a PS3 in 2023 depends on your personal preferences and gaming needs. If you value affordability, access to a large library of games, and nostalgia, then the PS3 may be a good choice for you. Personally, I believe that anyone should buy a PS3 console. It paved the way for the HD standard, as well as a new format that revolutionized media consumption for generations. You also have the ability to play practically three generations of games, with PS1 and PS2 backwards compatibility, depending on what model you get. There's crazy value in picking up a last generation console like the PS3. Today, the PlayStation 3 remains a popular console for gamers who want to experience classic games or explore the console's multimedia capabilities. While it may no longer be Sony's flagship console, it is still regarded as a groundbreaking device the help push the boundaries of gaming and entertainment. And that is why I believe the PlayStation 3 is the greatest console ever released. This has been N Vintage. Thanks for watching.